This is an airbag sensor. It's responsible for detecting sudden deceleration in a car crash. On these Toyotas, the airbag sensor is usually bolted to the radiator cradle. Here's how to access the airbag sensor under the headlight. I'm going to remove the side marker. I'm going to remove the headlight bolt. And I'm going to remove the bolts for the grill. And then I'm going to pop the grill off. I'm going to pull out the grill. And remove one more headlight bolt. And then remove the headlight from the car. This here is where the frame connects to the bumper rebar. This is the airbag sensor. To remove it, there's one 12 millimeter bolt and one electrical connector that needs to be removed. So here's an overview of how the airbag system works. The airbag sensor senses a deceleration during a collision and will send a signal to the SRS computer. The computer will also use the vehicle speed, yaw rate and seat belt occupant information to determine if an airbag needs to be deployed. It will then send the signal out to that appropriate airbag whether on the driver's side, passenger side or one of the side airbags as well as a signal out to the ECU to cut the engine off during a collision. This here is the ball and tube type of airbag sensor. It basically consists of a ball in a tube as well as a magnet with a pair of contact switches here and a diagnostic resistor. The system uses this diagnostic resistor every time on startup to make sure the sensor is functioning correctly. Normally the ball would be attracted to the magnet, but under rapid deceleration the ball will dislodge itself from the magnet and cause these two switches to contact each other sending a short circuit out to the SRS computer. This is the kind of sensor that's in my car right now. Basically it consists of a small cam as well as two contact switches and a diagnostic resistor. Driving along normally, this cam is free to bounce back and forth. However, under rapid deceleration, the momentum of this cam is enough to overcome the spring force of this switch, sending a short circuit out to the SRS computer. This is what the sensor looks like when it's removed from the vehicle. As you can see, rust is probably one of the common reasons why these things fail, because they're located on the front of the vehicle where all the salt and moisture build up. Let's open this guy up to see what's inside. Pry up here and pull off the connector. Here we've got these metal tabs here that hold in the sensor. I'm just going to pry those over. Remove the sensor. Here's the sensor removed from the housing. It's quite a sealed unit. So I'm just going to go around here with the blade and cut it open. Just looks like all this stuff here is just epoxy or glue. I'm just going to cut it out. Okay, so I've got all the glue off. I'm just going to continue prying at the plastic here with my pliers. Alright, I've got all the plastic removed from around the sensor. I'm just going to pry up on it right here. Revealing a circuit board inside. Then I'm going to pry up on the circuit board slowly and remove it from the housing. So here on the circuit board there's a little resistor on there that's used for the system check every time the car starts up to make sure the sensor is valid. These are the two terminals that come together when the vehicle experiences rapid deceleration sending a short circuit through the two wires back to the airbag computer. Now inside this sensor there's a little cam lever thing in here that moves back and forth on a shaft. Now when the sensor experiences rapid deceleration such as in a collision that little shaft will move forward which will make contact with the two leads on the circuit board here. Alright I'm going to attempt to remove this little cam just by prying it out and that's what we've got, the shaft as well as the little cam wheel that activates the sensor. So this is how the little cam wheel will engage with the two terminals completing the circuit. And that pretty much sums up what's inside the mechanism that deploys your airbags in a collision.